Hi everyone, my name is Mia and welcome back to Brimful of Books. So in today's video, I want to set up my new reading journal for 20... 21. I said it right. I had to re-record this so many times because I kept saying 2020, but I think my brain is just trying to tell me that it wants to repeat 2020. Don't we all want that? Anyway, so this is my reading journal so far, which is what I set up in my last journal video. It hasn't changed a lot. I basically just added a page for the 1000 Doors Readathon and my November wrap up. Now let's get into it. We're starting with the title page, obviously. I've seen this style of title page a lot in bullet journal videos, but the one that most directly inspired me for this one uh, was the reading journal video by Pages of Marie, which I will link below. Her journal is just so beautiful. Then I basically just went to Pinterest and Google and just printed out loads of bookish pictures and arranged them until they looked nice. Here I'm just setting up my reading tracker, so I'm trying to read every day in 2021, which I already haven't done, but let's just ignore that. As long as I can manage to read a little bit on most days of the year, that's completely fine and I'm happy with that. Then I decided to draw a ginkgo leaf just because I absolutely love these. They remind me of my family and they're just so beautiful. So I chose them as a bit of a theme throughout the journal. So they're gonna pop up again and again. Also, I'm just sad that I can't go get a ginkgo leaf tattoo, which is what I've wanted for so long and now I can't have it. So I'm just gonna draw it again and again and again until I can actually go get that tattoo. Then I decided to add this lovely washi tape here, which my friend got me for Christmas, and I love this so much, it's just beautiful. Here's a pro tip for you, if your journal page looks shit, just put loads and loads of washi tape on it, and it'll be fine, it'll look perfect. Then I did the title using these stamps, and then my camera died, so I didn't film the rest of the setup, but I basically just added loads and loads of stuff until it looked okay. Next up, we have my 21 books for 2021 spread. So basically, I just decided to pick seven genres that I really want to read more of. And then I picked three books in each of those genres, obviously making 21 altogether. And those are the books that I want to read this year. So the first genre we have is Romance with Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. You've probably heard this. Everyone loves this and I want to read it. Then we have Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibberts. This is on here because I've read Take a Hint, Danny Brown and I absolutely loved it. So I really wanted to read this one as well. And and lastly, we have The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. I hope I said that right, I'm sorry. This one just sounds amazing as well. Then we're moving into fantasy. So first up we have The Poppy War by Arif Kuang. Obviously this has also been everywhere and I really need to get to it at some point. Then we have Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. Again, it's been everywhere, I need it. All of these are really popular books that I just keep seeing everywhere. So that's why I want to read them finally because I am a basic bitch like that. Then we have Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo because I obviously love Six of Crows so I really want to read this one too. Now we're moving into graphic novels slash manga. First up we have Uzumaki by Junji Ito. Now this one is obviously one of the most famous kind of horror mangas out there and it just looks so scary and creepy and I'm so excited. Then we have The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill just because it looks adorable and I really want to read it. And then of course my one and only Heartstopper 4 because I love Alice Oseman and all of her books and I love Heartstopper so much so yeah. Then we're moving into thriller slash horror books and first up we have Stephen King's Misery which you've probably heard of and I really want to read it then of course Stephen King's The Institute which I bought so long ago and I still haven't read but I will get to it this year I promise then we have The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley which I wanted to read in December but I didn't get to it so I do still really want to read it now we're moving into true crime because my friend Beth from Read by Beth has a true crime book club. So I bought Helter Skelter, which was I think the October, November book, something like that. And I still haven't read it, so I want to read Helter Skelter, which is by Vincent Bugliosi and Kurt Gentry, maybe. <laughs> then we have Truman Capote with In Cold Blood. And lastly, The Family Next Door by John Clatt. So these are all books for Best Book Club, so you should really check that out. I'll link it down below. Now we're moving into memoir slash biography books. And first up, obviously, we have Becoming by Michelle Obama because everyone's been raving about this and I'm so excited to read it. Then we have a biography about Amelia Earhart by Mike Russell. 
and this is a book that a friend of mine got me for Christmas and I'm just really excited to read it because I'm just so interested in this. And lastly for this one we have All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. Again this is another book that I wanted to read in December but I didn't quite get to it so I'm gonna read it at some point this year hopefully. Now lastly we have non-fiction which is something that I really want to read more of. First up we have We Are The Weather by Jonathan Safran Fur. Then we have Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. This is obviously again a really popular book that I just really want to read. And lastly The Body Keeps Score by Bessel van der Kolk which is a book about trauma and I just found that really interesting. So yeah those are the 21 books that I really want to get to in 2021. I really hope I can do that but yeah. Watch me not read any of these. I mean, yeah, we'll see. I'm using the same stamps as before here. I think they're from Tiger, but you can get them at pretty much any arts and crafts store, I think. The ink pad that came with them was not very good, so I just decided to draw on them with my brush pen and it worked out so much better. Here's the page in a close-up again, just so that you can actually see what it is. Next up, we have the most time-consuming page that I made, which is the 2021 new releases page. So basically I saw someone on Instagram doing this kind of book design for their new releases page, and I thought I just really wanted to do that. I'm not gonna go into detail about the synopses of these books. Um, they just all sound really interesting to me. These are basically just from me looking up authors that I really love and if they have new books coming out. And then also just loads and loads of 2021 new releases booktube videos, so yeah. So I split up the new releases by month. So for January, I have Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas, which came out on the 12th of January. Then the 14th of January was The Ruthless Lady's Guide to Wizardry by C.M. Wagoner. Then on the 21st of January, we have The Burning Girls by C.J. Tudor, which I really need to read at some point. Then for February, we have The Project by Courtney Summers on the 2nd of February. I'm so excited for this because I absolutely loved Sadie, which is her other book, and I'm so excited. Then on the 4th of February, we have Me, My Dad, and the End of the Rainbow by Benjamin Dean. This is just like this adorable middle grade and it just sounds so good. Next up, also on the 4th of February, we have The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna, which again, just sounds amazing. And then also on the 4th of February, we have Lovers of Revolution by Renee Watson. I I hadn't heard about this at all before I saw it in a video and it just sounded amazing. Then the 12th of February is Across the Green Grass Fields by Shauna McGuire. Then on the 15th of February we have Fat Chance Charlie Vega by Crystal Maldonado, which again just sounds amazing. Then we're moving into March. On the 9th of March we have Act Your Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. Again, Talia Hibbert is just amazing. I want to read all of her books. Then on the 16th of March we have Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. The 18th of March is Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. Then the 23rd of March is Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. I hope I enjoy Cemetery Boys and I'll enjoy this one too, but we'll see. Then we're moving into April and we have on the 20th of April, Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart. I hope I'm saying that name right, but yeah. Then on the 29th of April, we have Ariadne by Jennifer Saint which is a Greek myth retelling, which sounds amazing. Then we're moving into May, and on the 13th of May, we have one of my most anticipated new releases of 2021, which is Heartstopper 4 by Alice Oseman, which obviously I already mentioned, and I love it. Then on the 27th of May, we have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which I'm so excited about. I loved Evelyn Hugo. It was just amazing, so yeah, really excited for this one. Then also on the 27th of May, we have Honey and Issues Guide to Fake Dating by Adibar... Jagadar. I'm so sorry if I said that horribly wrong. I'm so bad with names. Then we're moving into June now and we have on the 1st of June, One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. Then on the 8th of June, we have The Sea is Salt and So Am I by Cassandra Hart. Then on the 10th of June is The Maidens by Alex Michael Michaelides. Michael Michaelides. Michael Addis. Why do I sound Australian? Anyway, <laughs> so that one. I'm really excited for this one. It sounds perfectly dark academia, mixed with Greek mythology, and it just sounds so good. Then on the 1st of July, we have Rise to the Sun by Leah Johnson. And on the 22nd of July, we have She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. So two books about the sun, which is exciting. Then moving into August, on the 3rd of August, we have All's Well by Mona Award. I'm so excited for this one. I love bunnies, so we'll see how this one goes. And lastly, September, we have on the 12th of September, 
Bruce by Tanya Bouchaju. And then on the 21st of September, we have Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. I think this one is the one I'm most excited about for this year, just because I love The House in the Cerulean Sea so much. So I really hope I'm going to be loving this book too. I haven't got anything for the rest of the year because I just wasn't sure if release dates are actually going to stay as they are, or if they're going to change, because I feel like they're going to change a lot due to the pandemic and everything. So yeah, I just didn't write down the runs for the rest of the year. I'm going to do that at another point. Then I decided to put the prettiest covers and especially the ones that I'm most excited about on the sides here. Then I just added the title and obviously loads and loads of washi tape. Is anyone surprised by this point? The next page is my 2021 reading goal. So I want to read 30 books this year and then I just mark every one of them once I've read them here. I just decided to go with a really simple spread just because I didn't want to make another complicated design. Then I just added another ginkgo leaf. Can you tell that I'm obsessed? Then I left some space at the bottom just in case I do read more than 30 books and then I can add those here. On the other side, I'm going to write down all the books that I read and their ratings just so that I can have a look at all of them at a glance. I then left the next page blank, just in case I do read more than 30 books, then I can write them down there. Or I'm gonna write down my reading goals, I'm not completely sure yet. And lastly, we have my January spread. I realise it's already the end of the month once this video comes out, but I still just wanted to do a January spread. Again, I just searched up loads of pictures about winter and books and all of that, so then I just put them on here and it looked pretty. Then I wrote down my booktube video ideas that I wanted to do in January and obviously added a title. Then I added my January TBR on the other side, which is basically just self-help books because I'm doing a video on that right now. So keep an eye out for that. It's hopefully gonna come soon. I then started the wrap up page, but it's very basic. I'm gonna actually do it once I've finished reading my books for the month. And that was it. Here's a little flip through of all the spreads that I made. I really hope you're not too bored by journaling videos yet. I feel like they're everywhere, but that might just be me and the algorithm. But still, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my last reading journal video down below. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.